Welcome, Warden Law. Northeast of England isn't exactly known for its motor racing culture. We haven't created Formula One World Champion. We haven't created Le Mans legends. We are responsible for an Indy 500 winner though. George Robinson from Gosford from Newcastle won the 1946 Indy 500, but tragically lost his life later that year in an accident in Atlanta. As a driver, Robinson could have been the one who could have triggered a huge interest in motorsport in this region of the world. Sadly, that wasn't to be. This region is not entirely bereft of recent talent and people who have had the temerity to ignore the local sport norms like George Robson did. For a start, Sir Frank Williams was born a sand dancer just up the road in South Shields and he discovered a love of cars in his early days on Tyneside. It led to one of the great teams in racing being formed into some of the great F1 cars being built. Warren Hughes, considered by many to be the best British driver to never make it to Formula 1, also hails from the area. There were many wins in many categories of the sport during his career, most notably at Le Mans in LMP2 and in the British Touring Car Championship. Now in the North East we do have in North Yorkshire the Croft Circuit, but on the North East coast, the areas of Newcastle, Sunderland, Durham, our biggest heroes have been mainly on two wheels. And until now we haven't really had a facility I can engender that. There is a project though that's trying to change that. That's trying to turn northeast of England, one of the premium places in the country, to start those careers. That's Warden Law. There's been a lot of work done here recently, and there's a lot more to come. But where I'm walking is one day you're going to become spectator banks for this. Rallying and rallycross are a permanent feature of local motorsport and bikes, especially for the TT, where the likes of Dom the Bomb Herbertson, Ian Pixie Patterson and Richard Charlton have made their names. In those disciplines, the tools that were needed to succeed are not limited by the lack of facilities like this. For those with circuit racing on four wheels as a name, that's where Warden Law comes in, with its refreshed guys, somewhere for local talent to begin their journey. Someone who understands that is Rob Smedley. Yes, that Rob Smedley, who will forever be associated with Felipe Baby and Fernando is faster than you. The former Ferrari race engineer to Felipe Massa when he fought that nail bite in Championship Decider in 2008 against Lewis Hamilton. He's found himself becoming a regular visitor of Warden Law in his native northeast. A move to Williams followed his decade at Ferrari, and then he moved again to work for Formula One itself as a technical expert and advisor. And while there, he launched Total Kart and Zero, an electric entry level kart series designed to reduce the cost of entering the sport. The championship came to Warden Law late last year, but he has also turned up with his own kids as a cart and dad. Rob Smedley, legend. Thank you. <laughs> uh, what brings you to Warden Law? Um, well, I think, you know, um, between me and Warden Law, we're fast be, you know, we're becoming friends. Um, I brought my electric series here um, at the back end of last year. We're coming back here again. Um, you know, we've been very accommodating, um, you know, super bunch of people, and then we've just come here for um, karting this weekend, um, the um, World Club, Club Championship. Um, I brought, you know, um, some of my kids here, um, racing on playing karts, and just having a lo load of fun. Nice people, great crowd, um, good greets, you know, good place to come. Well, you obviously have worked in the world of F1 for long. Could you not have been in Bahrain this weekend? I could have been in Bahrain this weekend. Uh, I chose not to be in Bahrain and be here at Ward Law. Uh, I've got enough medals uh, of being in Bahrain. Thanks very much. <laughs> All winter testing in Formula One. Um, you know, it's time for, for um, other people to do that now. Um, I will be in Bahrain for the Grand Prix. Um, but hopefully it will be a bit sunny and a bit more glamorous than the testing. Um, but yeah, here we are. No, I, um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm getting more and more into car and just enjoying it really. 
Naturally, the northeast of England in the North Sea climate in March is very, very tempting. And it's a good reason to skip warmer climes. I mean, who would want to travel to Pari in? To be involved with the top level of motor racing when the winds are blown here and a day with thermals and a hot cup are needed. But on a more serious note, the electric carton series that Rob brought the cart in North East at Walden Law does click with what the area is developing in terms of road-based technology. The region has a huge engineering culture, especially with the invention of the railways here and its former standing as a colossus in shipbuilding and maritime engineering. That's gone now of course, but the new culture here is electric and alternative fuel-based motor. Actually it's not that new because Smith Electric Vehicles were based in Gateshead in Washington for a century from 1920. Nissan manufactures the Leaf here, along with batteries for the Renault Nissan Mitsubishi Alliance. EMA at the University of Sunderland has massive R&D input into electric, hybrid and hydrogen applications for the road. So with low-cost electric carton as a competitive sport being the brainchild of one of the sons of the region, it fits in with that. But racing is not something the area is known for. In terms of, again, linking to the F1 side of things, you've obviously been the best tracks in the world and whatnot. And you come to Warden Law and travelling up and down the country, how do you think the facilities here match up there? Or some other car tracks here and there? Well, they, they absolutely match up. Uh, you know, the, the, the facilities here are fantastic. You know, what the guys have done here with the investment that they've put into it, you know, not only investment into, into this particular circuit, but you're also investing in, in, in motorsports within the UK. You know, and I think we're building a community now of, of entrepreneurs, of of, of people who have the sport at heart, you know, working with Motorsport UK, um, working, you know, independently as well at the same time, um, and building Motorsport within the UK. You know, we have such a rich heritage, heritage of Motorsport in the UK. You've got to build it at the grassroots. You know, that's what we're all about. What I do with the electric series, and definitely what the guys are doing here at Carton North East. That's what they're about as well. And you can see that they're really passionate about it. And that's the main thing. I think if you're going to get involved at this level. Um, don't get involved to make a lot of money, you know, get involved because you're passionate um, and just put the, put the hard yards in and you can see that now, you know, um, you know this has been a, a great going concern for, for a while now but you can actually see that it's starting to pay dividends, the grids here and even at a you know, small club event like this, the grids are great um, and then when you come here when it's British Championships, you know, there's, the, the place is absolutely electric. So you can see it's starting to pay back now, you know, the investment in the area, the investment in the region, the investment in, in grassroots motorsport, um, it's brilliant. And I think that the facilities are fantastic, you know, it won't be, and you know, from what I hear, you know, the facilities are only going to get better as well. Investment, you know, for, further investment going into the facilities and, and the infrastructure, brilliant, good on them. As a northern lad, how did you feel? Did you find it easy to get into motorsports? Because obviously we don't have a, a huge motorsport heritage here. Um, how did you find it being from here, moving around the country? Uh, when you well, first started? It, it, wasn't, it wasn't difficult to, uh, once I was in, um, you know, and, and I was very lucky. I got into Formula One at a really, really young age, and then I kind of, you know, pinballed up the, 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 the management tree of, of Formula One really quickly for whatever reason. Um, I'm not sure it was based on talent, but there you go. You know, I got the lucky breaks. Um, but the but but what I can say is is that it was you know a kid from Middlesbrough going to a comprehensive school in Middlesbrough. Um, it's you know Formula One is not the the usual route of of, uh, of career or employment. And I can remember you know back in the in the eighties when I went to school telling the teachers that I wanted to work in Formula One, and they looked at me and laughed. You know literally they looked at me and laughed and said um, you know you want to kind of get your head from up your bottom and, um, and, and think about what you're going to do that down at British Steel. Um, and I, you know, I'm glad I didn't take that advice um, because it was, I followed my dream. And, and you know, one of the things that I try and do now is, is, is pay it back. You know, I'm, I'm a great believer in paying it back. I've been really lucky in my, in my not only in my career, but in my life really, you know, and, and, and those sliding door moments have, have kind of taken me to where I am now. And it's all about paying it back for me now, and, and that's why you know I like to get involved with schools, especially in the local area, um, and try to inspire kids, inspire kids to get into motorsports, and, and inspire kids to you know if, if Formula One is their dream as an engineer, as a driver, as whatever, um, follow your dream and try and get into it. You know, there's no reason if a kid like me from Middlesbrough from a comprehensive school can do it, anybody can do it. To have travelled the world with the highest echelon of motorsport, to have the current generation of Formula 1 circuits and their facilities as a workplace means that it would be easy to consider those as the benchmark. 
It's a huge compliment to the work and investment that the Hunter family have put into this venue that someone with the experiences of Rob Smedley considers it as being of such a high quality. And the plans here are for the long term. This area off the beaten track has seen the seeds for grassroots racing planted before, but those crops failed. We have Croft, where the likes of Carlos Pache, Nicky Lauda and James Hunt learnt their craft before Formula One. The track closed to circuit racing in 1981 for 14 years and reopened and has become part of the BTCC tour. We had racing at Catrick in the 50s and 60s, but those two tracks are quite a distance from Wearside and Tyneside. Once upon a time we had Thornaby, and more recently the Albemarle Barracks in Houston beside Newcastle, where Jackie Stewart frequented in his formative days and bike racing continued until the 1980s, but they are consigned to history. What we have on the outskirts of Sunderland though is a venue that can achieve what they didn't by ensuring that this area really does begin to nurture a motor racing way of life for years to come. As you can see, the circuit is popular. For example, the year for the Spring Series, we've got everything from Bambinos and Miniwax through Rotax classes up to the very fast KZs. People do speak highly. People do travel far and wide. The drives out of speed will tell you that it is a challenging circuit. Low grip, very, very slippy in the wet. It's a track that certainly does reward the driver. This spring club meeting featured 125 carts across 10 classes and 7 categories. 14 heats, 14 races. Some known names from the world of carnival here. Super 4 British champ Ryan Cannon, multiple British and Irish champion and current all plate winner Shea Daly in the KZ class, which reaches speeds of almost 90 miles an hour along the back straight here, but across 2022 it will get even bigger. The Ultimate Kart Championship, which is oversubscribed, visits twice this season. The British Karting Championship, first the IEME, KZ2 and TKM here and near the Rotax Brigade come July. They all join an abundance of club series and of course, the circuit is known for its extensive higher car activities too. If you're in the North East, come and see for yourself. The entrance is free, and all the information is available at wardenlawmotorsports.com or follow Warden Law Car Club on Facebook. There'll be more videos from Motor Racing UK across the year too, so keep an eye out and subscribe. Warden really is worth visiting. And if you want to know why, this is what I'm talking about.